a quiet road, and a quiet field in southern Pennsylvania. Not much happens here now, but 150 years ago, this was the site of the initial clash between two armies in what would become the largest land battle in the Western Hemisphere. This is McPherson's Ridge, the site of the initial clash between the armies of the Union and the Confederacy at the Battle of Gettysburg. This occasional video series is designed to teach new students of the Civil War about the history of some of the battles and give them a hopefully a commander's eye view of the engagements and why and how they were fought. In this video I'm going to cover a little bit of history of the McPherson's Ridge battle and events leading up to it. We're then going to do a virtual battlefield walk taking a quick look at the terrain that influenced some of the commander's thinking. We'll refight the battle and hopefully I'll give some comments that will be of use to a student on why commanders did what they did. Finally we'll have an after action review judging the lessons learned. So why was the battle fought at Gettysburg? For the most part uh, Gettysburg was the uh, hub of uh, numerous roads coming into the area throughout the region. Uh, a modern map shows this road network uh, coming into Gettysburg. And in 1863, uh, most of these roads uh, were still in existence. Uh, they were also excellent roads for the time. They were, uh, for the most part, uh, all-weather or near all-weather roads, so armies could use them for logistics, for uh, maneuvering both uh, east, west, and north, south. So it was just a natural place for the armies to come and meet. This map shows how the roads in the region converged on the town of Gettysburg, making it a reasonable spot for the armies to uh, occupy and fight over. By the evening of the 30th of June, the day before the Battle of Gettysburg began, the Union 1st Cavalry Division, led by General John Buford, had provided outstanding intelligence and screening for the Union Army of the Potomac. By the evening of June 30th, General Buford was accurately reporting the position of three of General Lee's corps. Uh, A.P. Hills, Longstreet's, and Ewell's Corps, and realized that the battle would be fought in this area the next day. In contrast, the Confederate Army was largely in the dark about the position and disposition of the Army of the Potomac. In large part, this is because Jeb Stuart, the Confederate cavalry commander, had uh, gone on a ride around the Union Army and was unable, uh, due to the distance, to report the Army of the Potomac's position and disposition to Lee. So Lee was advancing pretty much blind. An argument can be made that General Buford was the finest cavalry commander in the Union Army at the time of the Battle of Gettysburg. But Buford's 1st Cavalry Division was made up of two cavalry brigades, and both these cavalry brigades were commanded by outstanding cavalry officers in their own right. The 1st Brigade of Buford's Cavalry Division was commanded by General Gamble. Now, General Gamble was an Irish immigrant. He was born in Ireland and he immigrated to the United States in 1838. He had served in the British Army as a dragoon and when he came to the United States, he joined the 1st U.S. Dragoons before the Civil War, advancing to the rank of Sergeant Major in the pre-war Army. General Devon was the commander of the 2nd Brigade. He was a, a former lieutenant colonel from the New York State Militia who earned a living in civilian life as a house painter. He owned, he was a, a partner in a painter varnish company with his brother and he was also a very effective cavalry commander uh, which would be 
become more evident actually on the succeeding days of the battle. This is the situation at 0730 on the uh, 1st of July. Uh, Gamble, is, the majority of his brigade is located near the Lutheran Seminary. He has sent out uh, videttes, which are basically listening posts or observation posts, several miles to the uh, northwest. And these posts have been skirmishing with Confederate skirmishers uh, since about 4.30 in the morning. Uh, by 7.30, Archer's Brigade of Heath's Division is in contact with these videttes. Here at the spot on Chambersburg Pike, the first shot of the Battle of Gettysburg was fired at approximately 7.30 in the morning. By 8 o'clock, the Union videttes along Chambersburg Pike were under heavy pressure, and they withdrew towards Hare Ridge to the northwest of McPherson's Ridge. At the same time, Gamble sent forward about 500 men from his brigade to reinforce the position along Hare Ridge. This gave the Union about 750 men uh, who formed a skirmish line uh, at the crest of the ridge. At the same time, portions of Devon's brigade, which had been uh, detailed with patrolling the northwestern to northeastern uh, quadrant of the Gettysburg area, basically along the Mummusburg, Carlisle, and uh, Harrisburg roads. Portions of this brigade were brought back uh, to uh, McPherson's Ridge. By 9 o'clock in the morning, General Heath had grown frustrated with the delay caused by the Union Cavalry and deployed two of his brigades into a battle line along the west side of Willoughby Run. However, deploying his troops into battle line took nearly 30 minutes and Heath was unable to advance until approximately 9.30 in the morning. So the situation at 0900 is this. The 1st Cavalry Division is facing a Confederate Infantry Division with about three times the number of men and twice the number of artillery that it has. It, the 1st Cavalry Division must delay the Confederates from entering Gettysburg. Elements of the 1st U.S. Corps are coming up from the southwest. This unit, led by General Reynolds, should be able to hold the ridge against the uh, against Heath's division. But we, the U.S. Cavalry Division has to delay Heath until they arrive. We'll start our virtual battlefield walk at the Lutheran Seminary. This is where General Buford had his headquarters. Right now we are looking west towards McPherson's Ridge. Uh, in front of us, this uh, clump of trees is McPherson's Woods. Uh, it uh, forms the southern boundary of the battlefield. Looking at Willby Run, this is a creek that separated Hare Ridge to the west from McPherson's Ridge to the east. Uh, it, it basically will form the uh, forward edge of battle for the meeting engagement. This is Chambersburg Pike in the Toll House uh, in the center of the battlefield. This is the railroad cut, and here's how it appears today. Uh, it basically parallels Chambersburg Pike, goes through the center of the Union line. It's, it has, uh, as you can see, it has some high embankments. Uh, this gives it both an advantage to the using force and a, a disadvantage. The advantage is it, it, it acts as a concealed avenue of approach. Here you can see the banks you know, in this picture, too. Uh, as I said, it, it offers a concealed avenue of approach uh, for forces using it almost as a roadway. 
uh, but it also is a potentially a death trap. Uh, forces can be enfiladed by uh, fire coming from the top of the embankments. So it uh, has both advantages and significant disadvantages to the using force. At the time of the battle, it did not have this, uh, these tracks in. It was simply a, basically a, a bed. And here's the, the, uh, the sunken uh, railroad tracks. Moving, uh, moving to the north here, uh, we're approaching the northern flank of the Union forces along Willoughby Run. And then turning east, you can see this gently rising uh, slope leading to the top of McPherson's Ridge. Uh, a nice gentle slope that was actually very good for uh, defensive uh, use. It gave you a long field of fire uh, with an uphill advantage uh, for our forces on the top of the ridge. And we're moving south looking east. In front of us is McPherson's Ridge. And moving in the distance there is the Lutheran Seminary. We're turning around back north you know, from the center of the Union lines. And now we're looking west at Hare Ridge, where the Union, correction, where the Confederate forces will be advancing from. Here's a modern day view of. Willoughby Run and Hare Ridge looking from McPherson's farm, uh, very close to the spot we just stopped the uh, virtual viewpoint from. And you can see that these uh, long fields of fire, the open terrain, the gentle slope, uh, a defending force from here would have a very good, or a, a good defensive position against advancers from uh, Willoughby Run. And resuming our tour, here's again the railroad cut. And uh, uh, we're looking west from the top of McPherson's Ridge. And now we're moving west. This would be the Union right flank here. And now we're approaching Hare Ridge.